Hey everybody, so today I want to talk to you about a, a really serious matter, and that is when you are forsaken. Uh, here's what the psalmist said, David, a man after God's own heart. It's a great verse in uh, the, uh, Psalm 27. It says, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. To forsake means to uh, abandon or desert something or someone who is of value. The writer, you know, in this psalm, uh, didn't, was not actually forsaken by his mom and dad. Um, he was forsaken by f close friends and companions. But he used his mother and father as an example, the most extreme example of uh, those who are uh, most responsible to take care of you. And he's saying, even if your mom and dad were to forsake you, the Lord will take care of you. Now, if you've lived long enough, I know this has happened to you. In fact, I know that there are many of you who have been forsaken by uh, friends, family members, even your mom and dad, uh, especially over the last few years, you know, because of your political leanings or your stance on social issues or the racial divide. And, and uh, I mean, pastors are experiencing this, some church members leaving their churches because they're not, you know, doing what they think they should do regarding COVID or grandparents and parents that are being forsaken by children and grandchildren based on who you voted for. And this is happening with best friends and roommates and brothers and sisters and family members and stuff. And, uh, you know, being forsaken is one of the most painful gut wrenching experiences you can ever go through because at first it's just shocking that this person could break our relationship over these, uh, these, these issues. And what it says is that, uh, these issues are more important than you are and, uh, their relationship with you. And uh, it's, uh, it's devaluing, it's, it's um, disillusioning. It's uh, incredible how you, you're just in shock when, when, a, when somebody who's very close to you forsakes your relationship because of your belief system. And uh, so, but here's, here's the great thing. What do you do when you're forsaken by those closest to you? You turn to the Lord and depend on his faithfulness. You see, um, it, it doesn't mean that you become that person that says, you know, that isolates and says, well, I don't need people. I just need the Lord. No, it doesn't mean you live life with a chip on your shoulder either. You know, it's like, you know, well, that guy is well balanced because he has a chip on both shoulders. You know, you don't want to go through life like that. But here's the reality. If you will do what the psalmist says and you turn to the Lord in your pain of being forsaken by a loved one, um, what will happen is the best thing possible the side of heaven. Your trust in the Lord, your dependency in the Lord deepens because when a person who you trusted in forsakes you or abandons you or betrays you, it actually forces you to re it reminds you all over again that God is the only one who will never abandon you and never forsaken you. And it causes you to go deep into him. But here's the key. You've got to turn to him. That's why the psalmist says this. In the same psalm, Psalm 27, he says, when you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. You see, the Lord is asking you to seek him in your pain. He knows people are going to let you down, but he never will. And if you'll come to him, he will repair your heart. You know, one of the, one of the names of the Lord is uh, Jehovah Rapha. In the Hebrew, you know what that means? It means the quick stitcher. You see, the healing of your heart is going to take a while, but it's a lot faster if you take it to the Lord. And... Um, that's why, uh, look at this scripture, the same scripture, Psalm 27, he says this, I would have lost heart if I had not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. You see, when you are forsaken or abandoned, it's your heart that takes the hit. I mean, you almost feel like you can't breathe sometimes. It feels like your heart just is about to stop beating and needs resuscitated. And what I have found is the Lord can resuscitate your heart. And actually, he can cause it to become a better heart than it was before. You say, well, how is that even possible when you're hurt so badly by people? I don't know. It's just that it's God's God. And he's done it to me. I just recently have went through this. And it took me about a month to finally get with the Lord on it because it hurt so badly. But I just it's just amazing when the Lord touches your heart. He strengthens your heart. Turning your pain over to the Lord is the only way back to a healthy heart. So my question to you today is, are you willing to turn to the Lord in your pain and let him 
heal your heart? Have you turned your wounded heart over to the Lord yet? If not, why not? What do you think will happen if you don't? What do you think will happen if you do? You'll become a better person for it. And I'm with you on that. So, all right. Well, God bless. I'd love for you to leave any comments below here. I know this is a tender topic, uh, but, um, you know, I'm walking this journey with you. And we got stories we could swap. But let's be healthy people, not bitter people. God bless.